Good afternoon and thanks for joining us for Living Local, your lifestyle show for all things Charleston and beyond. I'm Ashley Missouri. As the saying goes, history is our greatest teacher, and that's what it's all about today here at Boone Hall Plantation, a place where the stories of the past and the promises of the future come together in perfect harmony. Today, we are going back in time to learn all about this historic low country landmark where the tales of yesteryear are impacting the hearts and minds of people from all walks of life. Joining us today, we have Ed Hansen. He's a historian here at Boone Hall Plantation. Thank you so much for having us today. Good morning. All right, let's start with the history of Boone Hall Plantation. What can you tell us about it? Well, with the history of Boone Hall Plantations, there's multiple facets. Mm -hmm. And some of the things that guests need to realize, there's multiple areas to enjoy about Boone Hall. One of the first, of course, is the Oaks. Now, the Oak Avenue, that's Living Oak. And the reason for the naming is that the Oaks actually combine and gather underneath, and they help each other out case they need more nutrition. That's how they survive. They're two and 300 years old. Ed, tell us about this incredible house here at Boot Hall Plantation. Well, the house is incredible. What's pretty neat is the history. We go through ownerships, but also we try to step back in time. And that's where the furnishings play a role here. The furnishings that you'll see are from the 17, 1800s. So they're of the time frame. Now, one of the questions we get is when people come in, why do we have all these stairs? Well, there's an answer for that. Thomas Stone that was involved with the construction of the house, he was a diplomat from Canada. And being a diplomat, he would entertain. That's why there's stairs coming down to each room. That creates an entrance into the rooms. But some of the significance of the house is that it brought on the old tradition of the old Southern life. And one of the unique things about this house is this gasolier right here. Now you may say gasolier, yeah, there's tubing and a key to turn the gas on, but there was a problem. We're surrounded by a creek, therefore we couldn't get gas. So what Thomas Stone did to build the house, he actually put paddle wheels down by the creek. And this house was 100% hydroelectric back in 1935. So they were quite progressive. They were very progressive. It was one of the first places in Mount Pleasant to have electricity. Now, another area of the, uh, interest is, of course, the gardens, the butterfly gardens. What's unique about that, the way they were designed from up top, if you were in a drone, it looks like butterfly wings on either side. And then the path is the body, and then the house was built to symbolize the head of the butterfly. Now, the significance of butterflies, that was used for pollination during the time for the crops. Now, that's the third area. Boone Hall is one of the oldest working farms in the country. It began back in 1681. It was Major John Boone that started Boone Hall, and it actually began with about 470 acres. It was uh, given to him by a marriage. He married um, Miss Elizabeth uh, Patey, and she had a dowry of 470 acres. That's how we all started. And then over the years, Boone Hall grew to 1,200, and then over 4,200 acres in size. Basically, it's seven square miles or 10 square kilometers in size. Uh, if you're familiar with the area where the town center is, all the way to Highway 41, then all the way up to the Wando River, this whole area mm -hmm. was Boone Hall. But over time, in particular the Depression, a lot of the acreage was sold off to keep the farm going. And it went from 4,200 to where it is today, 738 acres. And that's why it's so important to really preserve it. This is a oh, yes. treasure here. Well, and especially you can look at Boone Hall is away from it all, in the middle of it all. And one of the things Boone was known for were bricks. That's why Brickyard Plantation's right next to us. Boone, actually with the Horbecks, that was the next generation of owners. They were brick makers, and they would make about four million bricks per year. And they had about 85 slaves on the property at that time making the brick, and that would equate to each slave making one brick every three minutes, every single day, 365 days a year. But it was actually accomplished in three months. During the winter, all the brick wow. was made. And now the brick also is signified with the cabins over here. That's a whole other area of Boone Hall. The cabins themselves date back 1790 to 1810. And to make all the bricks, though, the children were involved with smoothing that brick. And that's where when you go through the cabins, you'll see fingerprints and thumbprints mm -hmm. of the children that were involved with that. Now, one of the oldest buildings on the plantation is Smokehouse. The Smokehouse is over here in the corner of the garden. Now, it was built around 1750. It's one of the oldest buildings in South Carolina. What's unique about the Smokehouse, though, is you'll see a pattern on that Smokehouse. And it's diamonds, and that was actually a brickmaker's mark, so that's their signature. Then in cabin three, you'll see diamonds again. It was the grandson of that brickmaker that was involved with those brick. 
Then, of course, the farm, we had bring, brought that up. But then the Gullah culture played a huge role with Charleston. The Gullah culture, which reaches from Jacksonville, North Carolina, to Jacksonville, Florida, had ways and means and spices for food and different traditions that were brought here. One of the biggest traditions that I respect is respect for one another with the Gullah. Yeah. So basically where Boone Hall plantation has some significance to it is that it's been adaptive over the years through changes. It's always evolved to be something new. So even during periods of that, well, it, it worked, but then things changed and it was adaptive again. And it's still being adaptive today. And that's where Boone Hall actually takes pride in making sure we share with the community and others from around the world history. That's what we're about. Well, thank you so much, Ed, for joining us. We're actually going to go speak with Miss Gloria, who's yes. quite popular around yes. here. And yes. she's going to tell us more about the Gullah culture and its impact here at Boone Hall Plantation. Yes. Gullahs, Gullah people helped to build this plantation, to have it where it is um, today. Being a minister, I look at it at a spiritual viewpoint. And I have people to come up to me and say, you know, how, how can you do this? How can you tell these stories and, and be here? And I said, this is where God would have us to be. Sometimes we go through trials, we go through tribulations, sometimes things get hard, and we wonder why. But then in the end, we can see the difference. We see the goals of where we're supposed to be. So I'm thankful to God for being here at Boone Hall to be able to tell the stories that I tell and for the people that come from Everywhere I say, and they, they just love, I just feel love um, being here at this place among the people that come. Usually at, at my program, I have photos of my great-grandmother, my grandmother, and you know, her children. And people have come up to me and, and said to me at the end of the show, do you know that your ancestors are so proud looking at you today? And I have my mother also on the table. And they said, do you know your mom is really proud of what you're doing? And you know, it, it has such an impact on me. And I just love looking at those pictures sometimes all by myself. And you know, thankful for where I came from. I usually do have a little skit that I um, have and I have people from the audience to come up and, and you know, be those characters. I have three characters and, um, and they just love it. And everybody gets a laugh out of it and um, laughter to me, um, it's like a medicine. Like it says in the Bible, laughter is like a medicine. So to hear people laugh, and then the greatest thing is when they come up in the end, and there might be a pastor and his wife sitting out here or, or a religious organization, and they'll come up to me and they will say, thank you for the spiritual experience. And you know, which I didn't expect that. And they will say that, and then they would say, um, um, God is pleased with your ministry. And, and it just touches my heart and makes me know that this is where I want to be right now. Before I come out of the cabin, I always talk to the Lord. And I say, Lord, I know this is your purpose for me. Lead me to the people that you would have me to, to speak to on today. Help me to say something that will help them. And um, I find every time that happens, and sometimes I go up to people in the wheelchair and I kind of you know, try to cheer them up. And um, at the end of my program, we do Amazing Grace. And um, you would be amazed that everybody knows Amazing Grace. So we sing it all together. And there's such a feeling of togetherness here. You know, I try to overlook the things of the past. We have to leave the past behind to, you know, to go on and, and, and to claim the future and to be who we are supposed to be. We cannot be who we are um, by having unforgiveness in our hearts and just, you know, for um, looking at people in a hateful, judgmental way. No, we have to do what God wants us to do. And He is love, but He wants us to love. So I'm a Gullah woman. I'm a Gullah woman. And um, I'm proud of uh, the Gullahs and who they are, how they've persevered, and um, great things that we have done and great things that we're going to do.